Dr. Ferguson, most of us know that the role of the adrenal glands is the fight or flight syndrome, but there's more to it than that. Could you tell us about the role of the adrenal glands? Yeah, if you look at the adrenal glands, they're uh, composed of two parts, the outer part and the inner part. The outer part is called the cortex and the inner part is called the medulla. And um, the outer part is in, uh, produces three sets of hormones, uh, glucocorticoids, mm -hmm. mineral corticoids, and androgens. And the inner part produces catecholamines, which are, you know, most people know as epinephrine or adrenaline. Okay. Um, so the outer part, uh, so glucocorticoids, that includes cortisol. Cortisol is involved in, yes, you're right, fight or flight, stress response. When we get stressed, our cortisol goes up. And uh, also when we're in the starvation mode, we haven't eaten for a while, our cortisol goes up. Oh. Because cortisol, what it does is it has an anti-inflammatory effect. Um, but it also uh, upregulates sugar. Mm. And so when we haven't eaten for a while, the cortisol goes up, uh, our body makes more sugar, but it also uh, somewhat has an effect of breaking down muscle. So over time, if you're chronically stressed, um, you'll get a redistribution of weight such that you're holding more weight around here and less in your muscles. Um, mm -hmm. The mineral corticoids are involved in... Uh, sodium potassium balance, which is you know, helpful for uh, having the right amount of fluids in your body as well as um, nerve conduction and heart uh, beating and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, the androgens are things like testosterone, estrogen, etc., cetera, um, which uh, the reproductive organs produce as well, but uh, for instance, for menopausal women, mm -hmm. uh, after uh, their ovaries stop producing estrogen, the uh, uh, adrenal glands are the main gland that produces estrogen. Oh. So you continue to produce estrogen uh, throughout your life. Um, the catecholamines are also involved in that fight or flight stress response um, and help upregulate heartbeat mm -hmm. and uh, cognition and uh, just help you get revved up for dealing with that stressful response. Mm -hmm. Now depending on, uh, so all those le different areas can potentially be dysfunctional. When most people think of the adrenals in the, the natural health world, they think of adrenal exhaustion. Mm -hmm. um, but really, if, you, if you're thinking about adrenals, they can be hyperfunctioning or hypofunctioning. Conventionally, hyperfunctioning would be something like Cushing syndrome, mm -hmm. and hypofunctioning would be something like Addison syndrome. So, and what those refer to is excess cortisol or deficient cortisol. And the deficient cortisol is what's thought of as adrenal exhaustion. Okay. And and so I like to break down uh, the adrenal uh, syndromes into kind of three different categories. Uh, one would be called maladaptive stress syndrome type 1, maladaptive stress syndrome type 2, maladaptive stress syndrome type 3. The first one is excessive catecholamine output. Mm -hmm. um, people are, are agitated, they're nervous, it's more situational. It, they, okay. they produce catecholamines and then it comes back down. And those. Those type of people uh, tend to respond well to relaxing things, uh, herbs called nervines uh, mm -hmm. that tend to calm a person, relax a person, like valerian, passionflower, hops, um, that sort of thing. The type 2 uh, maladaptive stress syndrome is excess cortisol production. Mm -hmm. So these people, um, this is a very common one, say the high-powered businessman who's been okay. going on hyper mode for a long time. And, and it's sort of an adaptive response. It works for a while, mm -hmm. but what I see with them is they have elevated cortisol levels and the effect that has is they start to have a redistribution of their weight, so they start holding on to more fat. So mm -hmm. I see their fat percentages go up. Uh, they have, can have depression, allergies, increased infections because mm -hmm. cortisol has an inhibitory effect on your immune system, and so you tend to get more infections. And uh, these people are treated well, um, one, by uh, trying to downregulate that cortisol production, but two, by dealing with the side effects of having too much cortisol. So downregulating cortisol uh, would be things like uh, DHEA can modulate that down, mm -hmm. um, which is an androgen hormone. Uh, vitamin C has that effect. Uh, phosphatidylserine makes the receptors uh, more sensitive to cortisol, so okay. your body doesn't need to put out as much. Um, and then to deal with the side effects of too much cortisol, for instance, too much cortisol can lead to more bone breakdown. So uh, mm -hmm. you'd want calcium, magnesium, vitamin D on board to mm -hmm. prevent osteoporosis. 
You can have depression with too much cortisol, so something like St. John's wort to help with depression. Uh, it can cause insulin resistance due to that uh, because cortisol tends to upregulate sugar in the blood. Mm -hmm. So things like chromium that keep the blood sugar okay. more, uh, more level um, would be effective. Now the third type is what's usually called adrenal exhaustion or adrenal fatigue, maladaptive the stress syndrome type 3. And this can follow the second one from having years of too much cortisol, or it can be its own thing. And so those, uh, when someone is exhausted, they're, they have hypofunctioning of their uh, adrenal glands. They have too little cortisol. And they tend to respond well to things like B vitamins and magnesium to help energy production, mm -hmm. as well as adaptogenic type herbs. Oh. And these are herbs that have a, traditionally been used to deal with uh, stress and fatigue, and have a modulating effect. And they, they, um, these would be herbs like ginseng, mm -hmm. ashwagandha, um, or otherwise known as withania. Okay. Um, uh, rosemary, eleutherococcus, Eleutheri. which is called uh, Siberian ginseng. Mm -hmm. um, here in the United States, the the ginseng of the Northwest is Oplopanax, mm -hmm. which is known as a devil's club. Um, okay. And and those are all can be effective herbs to uh, help adrenal exhaustion. Now they have to be taken for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's not an overnight fix. Mm -hmm. um, another, two other herbs that are really effective is licorice and centella or go to cola because both oh. of these herbs uh, have a cortisol sparing effect. In other words, they, they keep cortisol around longer um, mm -hmm. and so the body doesn't break it down as quickly. Now if you have high blood pressure, there can be some issues with cor uh, licorice. Mm -hmm. um, but both of those herbs are pretty effective and go to cola is the added benefit that it also uh, improves memory and uh, mental functioning as well as it's helpful for building strong uh, collagen and mm -hmm. ligaments and mm -hmm. um, so those are, can be some effective treatments for the adrenal gland. Well thank you very much. You're welcome.